Uh, Tony, you've experienced incredible highs and definitely some lows in March Madness and the NCAA tournament. Um, how have you been able to manage the emotional swings in your head coaching career? Yeah, I think, you know, one, that's life. You're, you're going to go through ups and downs, and uh, you understand the reality of that tournament. You know, first, it's just a, it's a privilege and an honor to earn your way to it. And I never take that for granted. And then when you get into it, um, it seems like as the years go on, the more uh, closer games, upsets, the parity has crept in and is certainly there. So to have been on both sides of the equation, um, it makes you appreciate, I think, the, the successes you have. And, you know, maybe you feel the losses, you try not to dwell on it, but, but you know that's the reality of it. And, you know, it always, Andy, when you go through anything from either great success or great failure, you always remind yourself it's what you do but your identity can't be in a great win, a national championship, or a one seed loss <laughs> to a 16 seed. Um, that'll kind of twist you up. And so just you know, try to play the season and prepare yourself and hopefully get that chance, and then the excitement to try to advance in it. But it's, it's always a reality check, and uh, it's still, I think, the greatest sporting event ever. You, there are some parallels, though, for what you experienced and what Purdue is going through because – both teams kind of stayed intact. Yeah. So you had that team coming back. For sure. You, they were completely motivated. They knew what happened. That was the chip, but also they knew what they needed to do differently. And then they won the national championship. Um, I'm curious, I don't know if you've spoken to Matt Painter, but just when you see like w what your experience was when you get a team back from such a disheartening loss to try to get them back up to try to compete for a title again. Yeah, I think that's it's very interesting. And... Um, I think it, you know, there's a quote that we used often. My wife gave it to me. It was from a TED Talk, and it said, if, if you learn to use adversity right, it will buy you a ticket to a place you could not have gone any other way. And, and I go back, and who knows, had we not had that loss, if we would have won the national championship the next year. You can argue that either way. But as you said, it does something to your young men and to your team it draws you together and you have to learn to use it right just because adversity happens doesn't guarantee it's how you respond that will be the answer but it does things yes we know the end of our story okay they don't yet um, but it does some unforeseen things I think it makes you take a look at what truly matters because you'll have the outside world screaming at you telling you you're a bum and I can't believe this you're no good and uh, if you choose to follow or listen to that voice, that'll take you down some tough path as paths. But it's good in a way to go through it and say, no, no, we're going to band together as a team. We're going to get closer. We're going to try to put the blinders on, so to speak, and compete and become what we have to become. And <clears throat> I think, again, in my experience and with our players, there was a closeness that was developed through that hard loss. And let's always remember it's a game. You look around the world, there's stuff going on that's real. And we play a game and it means so much, but, um, but what it did for our young men in terms of growing closer together, even with my family, you realize who cares for you, who looks at you for who you are instead of the success or the failures you have. So, uh, but, but you know, thinking specifically, when you can bring your team back, there's so much value and wisdom in, in kind of looking at what happened, addressing it, not obsessing on it, but not just brushing by it and say, oh, it was a fluke own it, um, grow from it. And I think that's what you do with all failure and all losses. And so uh, I think, you know, knowing the quality of coach that Matt is and the kind of young men he recruits, I know they'll use it. But, you know, you know how the tournament goes. You still have to be fortunate. You have to be healthy. You got to be hot. And all those things happen. So um, there hasn't been a team that's been, you know, so excellent in the regular season. And and he's one of the best there is. So uh, I wish it wouldn't have happened to him. Quite honestly, I, one of my assistants said, hey, tune in, watch the Purdue game. We might have someone joining us. And I tuned in and I felt some of those feelings that I felt. And I'm like, no, and I, I was pulling for, for them to not have to go through it. But sometimes, um, you know, too much is given, much is required. And I think that the way Matt is, I believe he's built to handle that and he'll help guide his team and his young men to to glean as much as they can from what they learn from it and hopefully, you know, have the best year they can from it. Prior to 2018, 
oh, 16 will never beat in a one, beat a one. So it happens then. Then it happens again in 23. Uh, it could happen again in 24, 25. Like, why do you think we're in an era now where things like this happen? 16s can beat ones. Yeah, I think basketball, you know, I played at Wisconsin Green Bay for my father, and and we always had this saying, good basketball knows no divisions or limits. And there's good players all over. And especially now in our current landscape with, you know, well, the extra COVID year, I think there's one more year of that and then that's done. But uh, with transferring, with, you know, retention of players, whether it's through NIL, things like that, you can kind of piece together your team in ways you couldn't have. So that makes teams better. And guys that maybe were at different schools and wanted a new change, you're seeing, a, I think, a better quality of players and teams and more maturity in the NCAA tournament. So always there's been parity, but now it's even more. And anyone can play with anyone. That is the mindset we had even way back in the ancient days when I played. And now you're seeing it. The game's so popular. And uh, there's more 15-2 upsets. The games are closer. Um, and the dominance of just one team, those days have been gone for a while. And I think that's what makes, obviously, everyone leans in and watches saying, Wow, this is this is some good stuff. I'm curious from a coaching perspective, and I think I don't care what level you are, when you have a player or players, you know, have something happen that's fluky, and that's what happened in the Furman game. Um, how do you handle those moments right then when you know that person is hurting? It was just a mistake. How do you handle that as a coach, as a mentor, to make sure that that person doesn't bear the burden of it and wear the weight of it? For that, from that point forward. Yeah, I think, um, you know, your job as a coach is certainly to <clears throat> address the immediate moment when a tough thing happens, but it, it's going to be more in the, the aftermath, you know, in the, the week, the months, and the years ahead. And I think you always, sports is such a good opportunity to pour into your, your young players' lives and say, again, what you do is important. You know, how you go about it, pursue excellence, be great, have dreams, and this matters greatly, you know, how well we do, but it never is your full identity. It's not who you are, and I think you always have to go back to that, whether you have great success, because sometimes success will take you off the path of what you're supposed to be doing and living uh, as much as failure or more, but the same thing when someone goes through something like that. You just, you understand who they are, and of course, you you're there and you're present and you just, you know, you go through the stuff together. But um, the the resiliency of our youth is astounding to me. And I think sometimes us older people have, it sticks a little more and we remember more and young people can usually, you know, go through stuff and then move on. But you have to be mindful of that. If you can't look with compassion on people who are struggling, um, boy, then we should not be in this profession. So that was different where you don't have the whole team coming back. Yeah. How did you manage that offseason after a tough loss, knowing you had to sort of reformat this roster? Yeah, this is a unique year for us. We have Reese Beekman, who's coming back, terrific point guard. I'm so excited for his, his last year with us and how he'll play. Um, although he does have a COVID year. I think he's the last guy, but uh, Reese coming back. And then we have Isaac McNeely, who played 20 minutes a game as a freshman, and Ryan Dunn, who played 11 minutes. No one else that played minutes. It's either all – we had some redshirt freshmen, incoming freshmen, and some transfers. So this is a new team. Hopefully it's not like this every year, you know, where you have to flip the roster. But we had a veteran team last year. So with this new team, it's just like let's find our identity. Let's go and, and get as good as we can and try to earn the right to get back to an NCAA tournament, have a great regular season, and advance. But there's such a, a newness to it that um, it's – you know, you, you use some lessons from last year, but it's it's really about this year.